do a thing for the economy. Colin King. To get to one speech and have the opportunity to speak to the budget of 2011. Uh, we certainly see it on this side of the House as being well received and uh, that is a mandate that we take great comfort with. Uh, the Speaker that just res resumed his seat uh, would make one slash one's wrists, uh, and I say that with quite consideration because of the, the tone in which he would lead his uh, constituents to support him in the future is so negative. And it brought back, Mr Speaker, the, to me the, the, the dialogue that went about when the government brought together the, the City of Auckland, which has been so very successful, and that person ridiculed and riled against every effort that this government made. I must say, Mr Speaker, that one has to thank Labour thank Labour very much because there are many uh, sort of DNA traits that exist within the Labour Party and, and one of them is to preach the politics of envy. And I, I allude to here uh, what happened about three weeks ago and it's a, an old farm saying, Mr Speaker, and you'd understand it, you, uh, you can't stop a dog that bites and all that you can do with a dog that bites is give it a bullet. And that's effectively, that's effectively what the New Zealand, New Zealand people have done to the Labour government, because they could, not, they could not prevent themselves from attacking the farming community, the rural and provincial heartland of New Zealand. They were running a line that connected with the rural and, uh, and provincial New Zealand that suggested that the next Labour policy on taxation would be to tax revenue, not profit. They then... They then went on to say that we, they would start gouging profit out of farmers to at least $800 million just when farming is getting back on its feet after nine years of oppression under Labour. And what would they do with that $800 million, which basically equates to about $33,000 per typical farmer? They were going to hand it out to R&D. They were going to do what um, my member from uh, Dunedin spoke about, creative accounting, whereby R&D tax credits, but they were going to be capped somehow. They are going to be R&D credits and they were going to be capped. I don't know how they were going to em ever going to uh, bring that about. In actual fact, when that became a question to the leader of the opposition, Phil Goff, he didn't know either. And that tells us a lot about the Labour government. So we, we do have a lot to thank the Labour opposition for, Mr Speaker, because what I was concerned about in provincial and rural New Zealand uh, coming up to this election in November was that complacency would get into uh, our voters and they wouldn't see the urgency of getting out there and voting. However, I can tell you the fire is back in their belly in the rural heartland of New Zealand and they will be voting. And another thing, and I, I speak to my learned colleague Shane Ardern, Chairman of the Primary Production Select Committee, uh, and the Minister David Carter, who will be at the field days. Uh, the farmers will be talking about the ETS. They will be talking about the gouging of $800 million from their, their top line. So, very important. The legacy of Labour, sadly, is that, and, and it was the, the failed member for Waimakariri uh, that made the comment that they had surpluses every year. Well, that is nothing to boast about when you waste them. And that is the problem. When New Zealand looked at the performance of the Labour government in office, the problem was the surpluses were wasted. And when you actually look during hard times, what has been achieved? There was nothing achieved that has endured the recession that we face today. All, you, all that government did was create a debt fueled consumption binge. We saw that recession in the export sector. We saw that the export sector went into recession in 2004. And, and Mr Hodson raised the question earlier on in the debate, when did inflation reach 5%? Well, I can tell Mr Hodson it reached 5% in 
in 2008. Point of order, Honourable Pete Hodgson. It might come of some interest to the member that I have not taken part in this debate. Shoot the dog. Um, oh. my... okay. Sorry, I'm... That wasn't a point of order. I'm... But anyway, I missed... so effectively, I missed all that. what I wish to do with the rest of the time is that to concentrate on, on where we are at the moment and the primary sector, because we have the lowest interest rates in 40 years, and effectively those interest rates are going to aid the rural community. And not only does it aid the rural community, it also assists the 400,000 odd SMEs that employ all New Zealand workers. And, an, and another point that was made by Judith Collins, the wonderful Minister of Police and, and other things, Veteran Affairs, is that if a young couple have $200,000 owing to the bank, that's their mortgage, mortgage, they effectively, today, under the environment that this government's created, are paying $200 less a week in interest. Now, that is stunning. That is stunning. When you're in government... When I, Mr Sarah, when you're in government, you can take credit for the good things as long as you also take credit for the bad things. So we accept that it's hard times. So really what we're seeing here, and it's a, probably a point for the Labour Party, there's nothing wrong with getting your head in the clouds. But the problem with Phil Goff and the Labour Party at the moment, they've let their feet get off the ground. So I just want to spend a few moments concentrating on the primary sector, boosting rural growth investment in irrigation. Now those were opportunities that passed, the Labour Party passed over. And, and I know that those that are informed adequately would be saying to themselves why we were not able to win those arguments and be able to spend that money wisely and create headroom in our economy uh, so that we could effectively grow this country's economy, create employment and, and go on from there. So what has this government done, Mr Speaker? It has put together $35 million that will be spent over five years to actually help develop proposals to a stage where they, are, they can develop a, a business plan. And one of those situations will be down in the Ward Flaxbourne area, which is in Marlborough. It is remarkably dry. It's remarkably fertile country. Uh, its soil temperatures at this time of the year are normally below grass growing levels because of frost and, and, and such like. But the opportunity to be able to get water from the Ura River or the Conway through to that area would actually change the opportunities and the confidence and reliability that those farmers can farm with. On top of that, Mr Speaker, uh, and we've got to thank the able Minister of Agriculture, David Carter, for his vision around water storage, is the $400 million that has been put aside for future investment. And that is really showing leadership. Now, in, in another particular area, in the Amuri Basin in North Canterbury, we've had a small area there that has been irrigated, courtesy of the National Government, back in the late 70s. Uh, and what we see there is that small area has become an oasis in an area where you can see a mouse run across the paddocks with its own cut lunch. And these are all opportunities that pass Labour by and when, when Labour is measured as to how they squandered those, those surpluses, how they took the money out of the pockets of the hard-working, enterprising New Zealanders and wasted it, they will be in opposition for many, many years. So in conclusion, uh, Mr Speaker, it gives me great pleasure in, in supporting uh, the budget, in supporting the motion as moved by the, the Finance Minister, but repudiating the, the uh, amendment to that motion by Phil Goff, who is being tested and found wanting in the context of coherent and forward-thinking forward-thinking uh, policy. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Dr Rajan.